pause. Hi, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here on this bonus class on managing your energy and not your time. This material is going to carry us through the first two months and it's going to be a bit of the foundation on which all of these other lessons are going to build. Why is it that we start here? The reason we start here is because this is the groundwork for all of the survival skills that you're going to learn in January and February. A lot of this is because of my PhD research in neuroscience that was all on the neural systems underlying motivation and motivation, productivity, getting through the workload. That seems to be like the big crux of where the survival is. And so I'm going to help you develop some new strategies and new techniques to be able to look at this in a different way. One way I want you to think about it as I said, it's called managing your energy, not your time. And this is because we tend to, when we're really busy, when we have a lot on our plates, we tend to go into productivity mode, managing every single second, taking advantage of every minute of every day, cutting out our lunches and working out our desks and um, going as late as possible. And when you have a 10 minute break, you fill it in with all sorts of stuff. Sound familiar? I know, I do it all the time. Instead of trying to manage your time and maximize the use of every minute, I want you to think about managing your energy instead. You only have a fixed amount of time in a day, 24 hours, and you can't get more of it. You can, however, get more energy. So you can think about your energy as something that is malleable, that you can get more of it by doing relaxing, joyful activities, and it also drains you when you do harder activities. Another way to think about energy is if you could imagine a graph, and I'll pop one up right here. In that graph, you can think of it as there's positive energy and negative energy, and you're gonna have high energy and low energy. And it divides the system up into four quadrants. Positive high energy is when you're really passionate and purposeful and joyful and excited. Those are the projects that really light you up. Then, if you go over another quadrant, there's negative high energy. That's what I call frantic survival mode. It's when you are rushing around trying to get as much done as possible. You're really, really active, but it's in a negative kind of churny, really stressful way. And that's a hard place to be. Another hard place to be is when it's low energy and negative. That's the realm of burnout and overwhelm. That's when there's so many things coming at you and you're just so exhausted from holding that much weight that you simply can't do any anymore. And you get into a very low energy state. That's the time when you come home from a really hard day and crash on the couch, tell people, don't make me make any more decisions. I don't wanna to talk to anybody. All I wanted to is scan through Netflix. Like that's the kind of burnout and overwhelm that can always overtake us when we've been in frantic survival for too long. And then the last quadrant is a really interesting one. It's positive but low energy. And that's the realm of recharge and rest. That's where you're getting a good night's sleep, curling up by the fire with a really good book. When you're enjoying a cup of coffee with a friend and or maybe going for a walk. Things that are kind of low, where you can let your mind wander, where you can relax and rebuild your energy. So those are some of the ways that you can think about energy in a way that you might be able to now manage it. Now what I want you to do is I want you to do what I call an energy scan. We're gonna look at all of these different types of energy. I want you to really look at how are you doing energetically? Now, if you are walking, running, driving, if you're listening to my voice as you are engaging in another task, and please remember, that is something that I always encourage busy leaders to do. Just listen to the audio and look at the visuals later. What that is all about is if you are walking, running, or driving, go ahead and continue doing those activities. However, otherwise, if you are watching on a video screen or if you're multitasking, I know that happens and that's okay, I want you to pause just for the next five minutes. What I want you to do is what I call an energy scan. 
You are going to scan through your mind, body, soul, your environment, and your connections. And you're going to think about, are the things that are in my mind, in my body, in my soul, are they fueling me or are they draining me? How am I doing? What is around in me right now and happening to me right now? Am I full of energy or am I low? So again, if you're running, walking, or driving, keep doing that. Otherwise, if you would, please close your eyes or lower your gaze. Pause whatever else you're doing and just take a few deep breaths. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and breathe out. Now, I want you to just observe what's going on in your mind. I want you to notice the pacing and the number of thoughts that are going through your head right now. How many different balls do you feel like you're juggling? How many different projects? How many different thoughts are there? Is it like running at 100 miles an hour in your mind? Or perhaps it's more like lying on a grassy field watching clouds pass by on a blue sunny day. Just notice, don't try to change anything. Just notice how many thoughts there are, what they are, and what's on your mind. Take a breath. Now let's switch to your body. I want you to notice and just quickly scan your attention from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. Bring your attention and bathe your attention on your legs, on your stomach, your chest. As you do so, I want you to notice, are you hot? Are you cold? Is there tension? Is your stomach hungry? or thirsty? Are your limbs tired? Or do they want to move? Are you holding stress in any of those places where we often do? Your neck, your shoulders, your stomach? Are your hands and your feet, are they warm or are they cold? Just notice, nothing to change. Just observe how you are energetically in your body. Next, take a breath. Notice your soul, the place where your feelings, identity, self-worth lie. What are the feelings and emotions that you have going on right now? How are you feeling emotionally what emotions are they? Happy? Sad? Angry? Anxious? Excited? Joyful? Curious? Just name the emotions. There are often maybe several of them at one time. And I also want you to think about your mission and your values your passion and your purpose. Are you feeling like that's what's going on right now for you? Are you feeling like you're able to lean into those right now? Okay, take a breath. Scan your environment. Think about the place where you are, the things that surround you. Do they fill you up? or do they drain you of energy? I know that when I walk outside, I always feel really good. I know that when I look at my cluttered desk, it's kind of draining. So just take a quick scan and notice. Finally, think about the connections in your life, the people, the animals, the other living creatures that fill your world. Does it fill you up? Or does it drain you? 
Are you feeling connected and close and loved? Or are things a little bit on the rocks? And it's okay to be honest. Just notice. Not, nothing to change. Nothing to fret about. Just take a view. All right, one more breath. <sighs> that was an energy scan. That was an opportunity for you to be able to just scan through and see how you are doing. If you are interested in giving that a number, I have a worksheet at the bottom of this. It's called an energy audit. And it's 25 questions, five in each category, that allows you to just assign a true or false value. And by counting up how many you think are true for you, you'll be able to give yourself a number. How am I doing energetically at this time? And it's a really good way for you to put a number on how you are doing at the beginning of Leadership Bootcamp and compare that to how you are doing at the end and see if the course has made any difference for you. It's a really lovely, just quick data tool for you. So what you want to think about is that your mind and body are actually connected to one another. We've done this energy scan to kind of look at all of these different realms, but your body knows what you need. And the most important thing about learning to manage your energy is to take the time to listen, to take the time to listen to the thoughts that are going through your head, to what your body needs, to how you're feeling and whether you feel like you're living into your identity, whether your environment is actually speaking to you and matching the things that you want to do and whether you feel connected and loved and belong and a sense of belonging your mind and body are connected in a really intimate way your mind tells your body what's going on your body talks right back we're going to talk about this a lot more in one of the later lessons this idea that the mind and body are connected is something that uh, I have been trained in. It's a called mind-body medicine, and I'll be sharing a whole bunch of the skills there with you over the course. For now, the things that I want you to develop is the skill of being able to do an energy scan when you need to, to be able to listen and read your energy meter at the times where it would be able to give you some data as to where you are and what you need right now. The other part of that, in it, over and above listening to what your meter is saying, I also want you to give yourself what you need. So for example, your mind and your body are connected in this manner called decision fatigue. What happens with decision fatigue is that it's a psychology principle in which if you make lots and lots of decisions through the day, the decisions get objectively worse as you go. And this is because your energy slowly gets drained. Some uh, neuroscientists call it neural load. The load on your brain is such that you start to be able to make decisions less well over time. On the other hand, what's really interesting is that the decisions get better after you take a break. And they saw this, for instance, with judges. They looked at judges' decisions at the beginning of the day, middle of the day, and end of the day. And on average, the beginning of the day decisions are objectively better when rated by other judges, not knowing when those decisions were made in the day. When you compare them to the end of the day, the end of the day decisions are worse. However, after a break, after lunch break, after a coffee break, the quality of the decisions goes back up again. And what this means is that if a judge or a person or a leader gives yourself what you need, if you feed yourself when you're hungry, if you let yourself feel some hard feelings and let them just kind of move through you, if you can change your environment in order to benefit you by taking a quick walk outside before you get back to it, or even better yet, taking a meeting outside on a walk, when you can do those kinds of things, the decision fatigue lessens greatly. And you can actually recharge your energy meter and get a little bit more energy back in your day. Just like going to the gas station and filling your tank back up again, if you can do that regularly and recharge, you have way better productivity and results. It's actually been shown in companies like Google when they compare teams that just work through and work really hard and 
take advantage of every single minute of every single day and you compare those teams to teams on the other hand who take regular breaks, who work for 50 minutes to an hour and then take a 10 minute break. And on those 10 minute breaks, they're not on their phones checking all of their email. Instead, they actually go to the break room and get a cup of coffee or they go outside and walk around. And when they come back, those teams have 40% better productivity than the ones that were just working and working and working all the way through. So I strongly encourage you to not just listen to your energy meter and do that energy scan every now and then, but also when you do it, listen to what it says and go give yourself what you need. One way to think about it is if you go back to that little uh, graph, right? What happens is that we're often on that negative side where we're cycling back and forth between frantic survival and burnout and then frantic survival and then burnout. Instead, what I want you to do is when you notice yourself falling into the frantic survival quadrant, instead of falling into burnout and just burning yourself all the way down to, until you have no energy left, as soon as you notice you're in frantic survival, go and intentionally do a recharge and rest. Intentionally do something that's gonna refill your energy tank and see if that can bring you back up into that positive high energy. Instead of the negative high energy, a recharge and rest can often bump you back into that place where you're moving forward with purpose, with meaning, with joy, with excitement. All right, that is all the content for today. What I want you to do is now take a look at some of the discussion questions. The discussion questions are these. I would love for you in the discussion questions to just share a little bit about what is going on for you when you did an energy scan or did the energy audit. What do those things tell you? And then name one thing that you might do differently. I would invite you to do that if you have the chance. The other thing that I'd invite you to do is try an experiment. So this experiment will take six days. For the first three days, you don't have to do anything at all except for do some noticing. I simply want you to notice your energy meter. Attend to it. Notice what it's like at the very beginning of the day, at the end of the day, right after lunch, right before you go and take a break, right before you go home at the end of the day and join your family for dinner. Just notice what your energy meter is like. After three days of that, you should have some really good insights about what is it that fuels you? What is it like at the beginning, at the end? How is it that you're feeling on a typical day? Once you know that, I want you to try something a little bit different and try just one change. That one change is what I call morning joy. Morning joy is that the first thing you do in the morning, when you first wake up and open your eyes, even possibly before you get out of bed, let that first thing you do fill you with joy. I know that oftentimes the first thing I did for a very long time, for years and years, was I would reach for my phone and I'd look at my email, my Facebook, I'd scroll the news, I'd spend you know a whole bunch of time scrolling around on Google. Like all of these things were like my typical morning routine. And honestly, by the end of that, I was kind of drained. It wasn't filling me up. It was actually quite draining and like all of that doom scrolling, right? Instead, I want you to try something so that the, even if it's just one minute, you're doing something that tops your energy tank off. You've just opened your eyes, you've just woken up. What is it that you could do, even for one minute, that will allow you to feel some joy? Would it be reading a book that you've always wanted to read and not really had enough time for? Just one minute, see how that feels. Or perhaps, Go and make yourself a cup of coffee and simply savor it before you open up your phone or your computer. Or maybe it's sitting down with a newspaper. Or maybe it's doing some writing in your journal or doodling and drawing. It doesn't matter what it is, just something that adds just that little bit of extra energy into your energy meter so you're like topping off your tank before you start your day. And see if that makes any difference. Try that for three days. And then I wish you the best and I wish you a happy new year and I will see you in the new year with some more videos. Wonderful leaders. I'll see you soon.